from Strata Bathworks with you again and today we're going to be talking about some quick tips and methods on how to tile a niche. So uh, we'll start off by talking about tile layout and how to start. If you want your niche to come out, I say it all the time, uh, to finish good you got to start good. So when you're tiling you really want to make sure that your first row is nice and level. Uh, that way when you get up to your niche it's going to be level across here and as long as you make sure that it's square across here it's going to make your niche installation so much easier so you can see by using uh, our level here we are perfectly level on the bottom and on the top we're also square in the corners So this is going to allow us to cut all of our pieces at the same measurement and so it's going to be a perfect box and that's going to also help us when we go to tile inside the niche. If your box is not square, it's going to become problematic when you're trying to cut the tiles to fit in here uh, because they're all going to be cut at angles. This niche that we have installed is a Schluter prefabricated niche. We like using these because there's no need for waterproofing in the corners doing custom niches then we have to spend a lot of time waterproofing all the seams so this is a nice option it's a little bit more expensive but in our opinion it's worth the money and you have a nice square box to start with now we're going to be using a product called marmaline and marmaline is an engineered stone some engineered stones require sealing this one does not check with the manufacturer instructions to determine whether or not it needs sealing or not now there's a few different profiles for, for marmaline. As you can see on this one, there's a beveled edge on one side and a square edge on the other side. Now on this job, we don't have access to our wet saw. So it makes, it makes cutting these stone a little bit more difficult. We're going to be using an angle grinder with a diamond blade today. So we're going to do butt joints, which means they're going to be square cuts on here as opposed to mitered cuts for 45 degree angles in the corner. If we're going to be doing butt joints, then we don't want to be using this beveled edge. So check both edges on some, some engineered stones, just the one side has a polished finish. On this product, we have a polished finish on both ends, so we're going to be using the square edge. There are other ways of finishing around the niche as well. We could tile the perimeter and we could use metal, much like what you see around what we've done through the window here. We've, we've mitered the Schluter metal at 45 degrees. And, and trimmed out that way and that came out very nice as well. So we'll begin by taking measurements uh, of the opening and again as I said if you have a nice square box this is going to become much easier. So this opening is 27 and 3 quarter on the bottom and exactly 27 and 3 quarter on the top as well. So what we're going to do is we want to mimic the grout joints here with the joint between the marmaline and the tile here. So we're going to subtract an eighth of an inch uh, from the total length and that should give us that sixteenth of an inch on each side. So we're going to head outside and uh, mark, the, mark the marmaline and show you cuts with the angle grinder. Okay, we've marked out our marmaline with uh, our measurements and if you see down here I've put an X on one side of the line. Uh, the purpose of this is we're going to keep our blade on this side of the line so we don't infringe on the measurement that we've made. And just before we get going, we're going to make sure that we have all of our, our PPE on. So this Marmaline product cuts very nice. We use a, a Montolet 4 inch diamond blade on our grinding wheel and it cuts very well uh, dry cut. We've got no, no chipping out whatsoever on this with the dry cut. Uh, if the product that you're using, you find it is chipping out, you can take a wet sponge and hold it against the grinding wheel while you cut. And this is going to greatly reduce chip out. 
Now that we've got these two pieces of marmalade cut, I've dry fit them in here and stacked them on top of each other. We're going to install the bottom one first, but the bottom one's got to have a slope on it. We're going to put roughly uh, an eighth of an inch slope on it so that we have drainage for water. It's also worth mentioning that some people prefer to tile the back of this niche prior to installing the trim. In this instance, we really like the reveal, which means the amount that the trim is protruding from the tile at this point. If we were to tile the back first, it's going to push out this marmaline quite significantly and we would have to, to cut make rip cuts to trim that down to size. So we're going to tile this first uh, prior to tiling the back. What we're going to do is take a measurement from the front edge of this stacked up marmaline and we're going to measure to the top of here and again we're going to subtract about an eighth of an inch so that after the cut we can maintain that grout joint around the outside. So this measurement is 10 and 15 sixteenths. So we're going to cut it at 10 and 13 sixteenths. So we've marked out 10 and 13 sixteenths, which was the measurement on the front edge. So we're going to subtract an eighth of an inch and angle cut the bottom of this piece so that we can get the correct slope. So subtracting an eighth of an inch from 10 and 13 sixteenths is 10 and 11 sixteenths. So the front edge of our marmaline is going to be an eighth of an inch longer than the back edge. So we're going to use a square and connect these two points. And that's going to give us enough of an angle so that the bottom piece will have an eighth of an inch slope so that water will drain off of it. Now that we've cut everything, we've dry fit it in place just to make sure that we're happy with all of our cuts. And we are, so we're going to go ahead and thin set this in place. We're going to spread thin set all over everywhere and install all the pieces at the same time. We're going to use a three quarter inch by three quarter inch notch trowel for this application. And the way we determine that is, is how much this tile comes past the niche. And it doesn't come past much, but we, we figure a three quarter inch by three quarter inch trowel is going to give us enough thin set uh, to get good coverage, but also not so much that it's going to push the, the marble line too far away from the niche. So we spread our thin set all the way around the perimeter of the box and we've also back buttered each one of our pieces so that they're all ready to go. Uh, the exception is the bottom piece where we built up thin set on the back side which is going to help us get our eighth of an inch slope. So we're going to go ahead and install that now. By leaving these side pieces on a little bit of an angle like this, it's going to allow us to put the top piece in without disturbing things too much. Now, because we have a lot of thin set built up back here. This is a little bit tight. So we're not going to force this piece over. We're going to risk scratching it if we do that. So we're just going to gently ease this down. Just gentle pressure until we get this into position.
we're just applying some pressure and making sure that we have good contact on the pin set. Now it's a matter of going around and checking, make sure everything's square and make sure we have the proper fall on it. That's great fall. And we can take our level and make sure that this is still level here. You can't get any better than that. So now that I'm really happy with my install, I can just go around with spacers and I'm going to make sure that I have equal spacing all the way around. And by the looks of this one, it's going to require very little work. Now that we've made all of our adjustments and we've shimmed where we needed to shim, uh, now I go around with my square and make sure that all the pieces that I've installed are square to each other and also square off the back wall. That's all perfect. And of course the bottom one, we have a nice slope on here for the water, so you're not gonna be square on that. One further thing I wanna point out is uh, we've left the reveal, the amount that this tile, or the amount that the marble line sticks out past the tile is roughly 16th of an inch. And we like to have that little lip. So when we come around with the silicone caulking afterwards, it's a color match caulking, so it'll match the grout, but uh, it just gives you a nice edge to seal that up. Another quick tip that I'd like to point out before we go any further is uh, occasionally when we're installing these, you get a little bit of a dip uh, on the top one or even the bottom one, um, depending on the thickness of your thin set or the width of this. So one thing you can do is to use a, a pair of clamps like this that are, that are able to expand. And what we would do is we would just take a, a shim and put it under here just to make sure that we don't ruin that level. And then we can push that top piece up uh, using a, a level until we got to the point where we're happy. Uh, we're not running into that issue on this one and so we're just gonna leave it alone. Yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and tile the back of the niche. Uh, a lot of times we like to use a shower floor tile uh, to, do, to do the back. We think it's a nice, uh, nice feature that ties everything together. On this project, the shower floor is very similar to the wall tile, so we're just going to continue on with the wall tile. One thing I'll point out is we're just going to be mindful of where the, the joints are, the grout joints, and we're going to try to continue on with them uh, for continuity's sake. Now that we finished up tiling the back of the niche, I had two more pointers that I wanted to, to show you. And one of them is these self-leveling clips. You don't absolutely have to have them, but we use them all the time. It makes life so much easier and it really gives you that perfect finish. So I think it's worthwhile to go out and purchase them. If not, then you can get away without. The other point I wanted to mention was that uh, when you're cutting out tiles like this, it's good if you can save the pieces, the cutouts here and reuse them, especially with a tile like this with some grain in them. So as you can see, we've saved this piece to, to insert in here so that the grain matches up. Unfortunately, this tile broke on me and we had to use another tile, but you just try to find one that matches as close as possible. In any event, uh, when you're cutting out tiles with any sort of a pattern or grain in, it's a good idea if you can try to retain these pieces and then use them um, so the grain continues into the niche. It, it uh, really makes a difference. So we're going to let this dry overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow, knock clips out and grout it and caulk it and that should be a wrap. Okay, these tiles have had a chance to set up overnight now and now we're going to go ahead and remove the clips. These clips are made by Perfect Level Master. 
There's lots of different kinds of leveling clips that you can use. These ones just happen to be readily available in our area. We really enjoy using them. So um, when you're using these on the floor, uh, you can remove these simply just by kicking them. If you have a pair of uh, safety boots on, or our preferred method is just using the, the rubber mallet and just giving them a swift, quick hit. Here we are applying the grout. The product we're using is called Profix Alpha High Performance Grout. It's a polymer reinforced grout that can be used for grout joints from 1 16th of an inch up to 1 inch. When selecting your grout, be sure to read the label completely to confirm that the product meets the requirements for your specific application. Now that we've given the grout a chance to dry overnight, we're going to go ahead and silicone the inside and all the seams around as well. The product we're going to be using is uh, made by Kaisel. It's Oka silicone. Anytime we're doing uh, caulking inside the shower, we always like to use 100% silicone. This product is a color match caulking and it's very nice and easy to work with. We've had a lot of experience doing this freehand. It's, uh, if you can do it freehand, it saves you a lot of time. If you don't have a lot of experience, I would highly recommend taping off the area you're going to be caulking. Uh, so what I'll do is I will go around and freehand the inside of the box first and then for illustration purposes I'll tape off the outside and show you taping off that as well. off the outside of the niche. I like to use a blue painter's tape. I find it sticks to the tile a lot better than some of the other tapes, such as the green tape. Now that we're all masked off, I'm going to seal around the outside. I'm going to smooth it out once with my finger while the tape is in place, and then I'm going to take the tape off and I'm going to smooth it out one final time. I just wanted to point out before we go any further that these grout joints are very small, they're roughly 16th of an inch. So when we cut our tube of caulking, we want to keep that hole very small as well, to about 16th, so that uh, not too much is coming out and we can keep that 16th of an inch. So, here we go. Now I'm going to pull the tape off and I'm going to smooth it out one more time. When you pull the tape off, it usually leaves a bit of a ridge on the edge of the silicone. So by pulling the tape off but then smoothing it out one final pass, it smooths out that ridge. Uh, the reason I like to seal the outside of the niche is anytime you have two tiles coming together and maybe they don't line up perfectly or maybe you had a little bit of chip out on a tile uh, when you were cutting them. By sealing this outside with the color match caulking, it just hides any little imperfections and makes it look perfect. Okay, that's it for this niche installation. We hope this video was helpful for you, and if it was, please give us a like, and we hope to see you next time.